do the word, oh God, for them to stand on the word, oh God, and teach and preach the word, oh God, even if they don't have but five members, oh God. Lord, we know that the we know that you're you are the truth, oh God. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to touch those leaders, to speak on your truth, oh God, to live in your truth, oh God, to walk in your truth, oh God. Lord, we know it's your word, oh God, that's going to draw the people, oh God. We know it's your word, oh God, not my word, not our pastor's word, but your word, oh God, that is going to draw the people, oh God. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to touch the marriages, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we know that marriages are in a crucial state, oh God, because we know that the enemy does not like marriage. But Lord, we know that you ordain marriage, oh God. And Lord, we know that you hold marriage close to your heart, oh God. And we ask you, Lord, to touch each and every marriage, oh God, under the sound of my voice, oh God. Lord, we ask you to touch those. Someone may be going through something right now. Someone may be packing up in their mind to leave, oh God. But Lord, we ask you, Lord, to give them a word, send them a word, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we ask you to go by the hospital on today, oh God. We ask you to go into the nursing home today, oh God. Lord, we ask you to heal those who are on their beds of affliction, oh God. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, we know that we, your word says that you've never seen the righteous forsaken, oh God. Yet your, their seed begging bread, oh God. And Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to help us stay in the righteous standing of you, oh God. So that we won't have to beg or, and, and we will be blessed, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to, to go, go to those who don't believe or just don't know the way, oh God. Lord, we ask you to touch them, oh God. We ask you to send them a revelation, oh God. Lord, we ask you to send somebody, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, so that you can get the increase, oh God. Because you said some plant, some water, but you get the increase, oh God. Lord, however you do it, oh God, do it for your glory, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we love you, oh God, on today, oh God. And we ask you, Lord, to just touch, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Send your help, oh God. Send your anointing, oh God, in this place, oh God. So that whoever came in today won't leave here the way that they came, oh God. Lord, help us to release our burdens in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let us be free, oh God. Lord, you said who the Son sets free is free indeed, oh God. And Lord, we just ask you to give us freedom, oh God. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you what you're going to do, oh God. And Lord, we just ask you, Lord, right now, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to bless the children, oh God. Each and every child, oh God. Lord, we know that there's a lot that they come against in this day and time, oh God. But Lord, we just ask you to bless the children. We ask you to give them a mind, oh God. A hunger and a thirst and desire to want to to want to run after you at a young age, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we know you're raising up leaders, oh God. Lord, we could be, you're raising up future presidents, oh God. In the name of Jesus, give them the courage and the confidence, oh God. We bind peer pressure in the name of Jesus, oh God. We loose, Lord, a, a spirit of boldness, oh God, for them not to be ashamed, oh God, to stand and to serve you at their young age, oh God. And Lord, we know, Lord, that you can do all things, oh God. Your word tells us that you will do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that we can ask or imagine, oh God, according to the power that works within us, oh God. And Lord, we know that as we walk in your way, oh God, we have power, oh God. Lord, help us to work our power in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Lord, we ask you to bless those who are weak, oh God. Those who can't even open their mouth, oh God. Lord, we ask you to hear their heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, on this day, oh God. We thank you, God, for this day, oh God, that you made, oh God. And we thank you, God, for going before us, oh God, in this service, Lord. We ask you to bless our pastor in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we ask you to keep her close to you, oh God. We ask you to bind the enemy, oh God, that comes to try to kill, steal, and destroy. Your word says that even though a weapon may form, no weapon, no weapon formed against her, oh God, shall prosper, oh God. And we thank you, God. We thank you for the doors that are being opened, oh God, for this pastor, for this house, for this ministry, for these ministers, oh God. Lord, we thank you, God. 
Lord, we know that it is due season, oh God. And we thank you, God, right now for due season, oh God. Due season, oh God, Lord. Due season, oh God. I receive it, oh God. I want you to receive, oh God. The people, it is due season, oh God. And we just thank you, God. We thank you, God, for a woman of God who loves you, who walks it, who talks it, oh God. And Lord, we just ask you to just continue to bless her family, oh God. Lord, we ask you to bless her family, her daughter, oh God, her mom and everyone in her family, Lord. We thank you, God. And Lord, we're going to give you the honor and the praise. And we just ask you, Lord, to receive this prayer, oh God, in your son Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands. Let's stand on our feet. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet this morning. Let's just worship God just for a little while longer. Even the children, I need you all to pay attention. Let's worship God this morning. Lift your hands. Tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. Tell him something sweet. Tell him how you adore him, how you need him, how he alone is worthy. He alone is excellent. Yes, Lord. And we thank you this morning, God. We bless you. We praise you. We adore you. We worship you. Oh, God, there's no one like you in all of the world. And God, we thank you that you are a God that looks, that sits high and looks down low. We thank you that you are a God that is concerned about us. And God, we invite you into this moment. We invite you into this this day, we invite you into this service, God. We ask you to have your way, Father. Oh, God, have your way, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God. Oh, God, we just adore you. We just adore you. We just adore you. We just adore you. We adore you this morning, God, because you are a great, good, good father. A good, good father that you are. There is no one like you, God. Oh, God, there's no rather better place than in your will and in your arms and walking with you and talking with you, oh God. God, so for that, we're so grateful. We're so grateful in the name of Jesus. And as we're praying in this moment, we're going to uplift uh, Sister Georgia and Brother Jamie as she is uh, um, at the hospital now, getting ready to give birth. So we're going to pray and send prayers to them this morning that God covers her covers the baby in the name of Jesus. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come towards their dwelling. We pray now that there is a safe and healthy delivery. We pray now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. We pray now for the baby, for the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We believe God, we believe a good report in the name of Jesus. So now God, we ask you to dispatch every angel into that room. We dispatch every angel to camp around that room. Even now, God, even now, God, and anything that the enemy is trying to bring forth, we send it back to the pits of hell in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask you now, Father, let your blood cover, cover and protect them. Glory be to God. And we thank you, God. We thank you for the miracle. We thank you for the blessing because we know that God's children come from you, God. So we thank you, Father, even now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And now, God, God, I ask you, Father, God, to help me to decrease that you may increase. God, as I give the word, God, that which you have sent for me to give today, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we ask you now that the power and the authority, God, God comes with the word and let somebody's life be changed and transformed. Let their mind be renewed, Holy Spirit, the way that only you can, Father. Lord, as you're helping us and you're teaching us, God, and you're molding us and you're shaping us and you're allowing us to become, God, that for which you've called for us to be. And God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And even while we're in this moment, real quickly, because I'm going to try to get this word out and because we got some other things we got to take care of today. I want you to find you a neighbor, find you somebody 
And I want you to touch them, grab their hand, and I want you to pray and intercede for them this morning. I want you to, even if you need to ask them, is there something that I can pray and agree with you on this morning? What would that be? What, what, what do you have for, for God to do in your life? Ask them, do we, what, 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 what do you believe God for? What should we be believing God for? Because we're going to believe today that God is going to work a miracle, that God is going to open a door, God is going to give instruction and direction, that God is going to give clarity, that God is going to give wisdom. Even those that are watching virtually, if you're in the room with somebody, grab their hand, grab your neighbor. Even if you're by yourself, listen, I'm going to come into agreement with you this morning, and I'm going to believe God with you. Because the Bible says that when two or three agree, on anything that God will hear but what I need you to understand that it has to be his will also but so we're going to believe that his will be done in your life according to his word according to the promise for your life whatever that thing is that you're standing in need of I pray this morning that God touches you that God heals you in the areas where you need healing I pray this morning that God transforms your heart that God renews that relationship that God helps your marriage that God saves your son and saves your daughter even now God we thank you today father God that somebody's life is being changed I thank you that somebody's daughter is coming back home you've been looking for you've been praying for and I pray today that God arrest her in the spirit and bring her home bring her back to the place where she once had a love and a, a heart for God I pray now that God saves your son I pray now that God heals your husband Husband, that God heals your wife. I pray now that every stronghold, every addiction be broken this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I pray ahead your protection over everybody, over your families, over your cars. Even now, I speak against that accident. That is trying to happen for somebody that is watching. We pray now that it be stopped and it be blocked by the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And we believe that it is done. We believe by faith. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we believe a good report in Jesus name. Let everybody clap your hands in this place and give God glory. Hallelujah. We can do better than that. Clap your hands in this place. Clap your hands in the place like the devil in between your hands, like you can't stand him. Glory to God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We thank you. We thank him in advance. We thank him in advance. Yes, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. We count it all joy. We count it all joy. We count it all joy. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So if you all could be seated. I got to get this mic. There we go. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Is the other mic turned off? Let's make sure that's turned off. Okay. Glory be to Jesus. All right. We're going to go into the text today real quickly. Let's go to... We're going to go to Acts. I might have to turn it down on the side. Yeah, slide it down some. Yeah, but we have a ringing. There we go. Bless God. Glory be to Jesus. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 8 this morning. That's perfect. Thank you. It's good to see everybody. I know the children are waiting to go to class. Uh, you all will be dismissed here shortly, but just give us a moment um, as um, she's preparing for your guys' class. For those that are 12 and under, um, 
will be able to go this morning for that class. Um, good to see some 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 faces I ain't seen. Bless you. <laughs> yes, Lord. And those that are watching virtually, good morning. Good morning to our St. Louis family. Bless God for you all. Everybody in their respective places. So we're going to jump right on in. Um, so Acts, I'm going to be reading from the 14th, 14th verse, and we're going to be reading from the Amplified Version this morning. And I believe this text is going to help many of us um, to see and be able to get a understanding of, of kind of where some of us have been. Glory be to God. So let's go to the Amplified Version, chapter 8. Listen, listen, my children, children, let's bring the noise down. Thank you. All right. Verse 14. And it reads, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. They came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then... Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of hands, laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. Right? Then it says, as we keep reading, saying, Give me this authority and power too, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, may your money be destroyed along with you because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this matter because your heart, motive, purpose is not right before God. So repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that, if possible, this thought of your heart may be forgiven. For I see that you are provoked by bitterness and bound by sin. But Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me, both of you, so that nothing of what you have said will come upon me. So I want to speak to you all for a moment this morning um, about a thought, about a subject called a repentant heart, a repentant heart. And I want to deal with some things today. Now, on Thursday, for those that was maybe listening, um, we talked, we had a good message on Thursday. That really did something to me personally. But on Thursday, we came from the text. I think there was in 2 Peter again, dealing with Peter. And what we talked about on Thursday was just how a lot of times we feel like we're always waiting on God and so forth. And God was letting us know that you're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. But then he helps us to understand how he's given us long suffering and so forth. And we ended the text with um, repentance. And as I was reading that, the Lord began to share with me how many people we say to repent. We say that we repent and we say we walk in repentance. But a lot of times people don't really know what repentance really is. And the Lord began to deal with me on that to help us, to bring us to a full understanding 
even as a church, even as a body, to have a better understanding of repentance. And most of the time when we have heard to repent, a lot of times we heard about it, you know, maybe in church or growing up where they say, you need to repent, you need to, you need to get it right. And you kind of, that was all you ever really heard was repent and get it right. And last, a lot of times it was if you went out at night or you did something that people could see or, you know what I'm saying, you did something that wouldn't get what you was taught or learned. People say, well, you need to repent. You need to get it right. You need to do this. And you'd be like, okay, but most of us, we hear it. But a lot of times we just went ahead and did what we wanted to do again the next day anyway. So, but we were told to repent, 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 repent. So as I begin to go deeper into what repentance and what repent truly is, I begin to really dig into this, the word of it, because I, I want y'all to understand it, because a lot of times we say stuff without really having a full knowledge of a thing, and that's why a lot of times we don't really see transformation and change in our lives, because we only say what we heard, and it's hard for us to really do what we heard because we don't know. And to be honest with you, you know, to repent or to walk in repentance is really important for your journey. But I need for us to really understand what it is and be knowledgeable of it because it's very vital. So first, I want to dig into it a little bit. So when it comes down to repent, which in, in Hebrew, and I like to go to the Hebrew sometimes when I'm studying so that we can get the original intent and original meaning of the word, which re to repent in Hebrew is also called metaonia, metaonia, and I might be pronouncing that wrong, but that's okay. But anyway, we're going to still talk about the definition. All right, praise God. But to, what it really has to do with is to think differently or afterwards or reconsider. It also has to do with a change of mind, being relent, implying the feeling of regret and sorrow at the same time. So when you are, when you repent, Really, you should have a change of mind. It's not necessarily like, let me repent. Let me stop what I'm doing. Because a lot of times you try to stop, but you can't. Why? Because you have to really change your mind. Okay? So, to repent has to do with a change of mind. And also, when you repent, that it should produce some type of feeling of regret and sorrow. But at the same time, it's not for you to stay there in sorrow because we understand that in Christ there's no condemnation, but it should be enough guilt and sorrow to make you want to change what your mind about what you were doing. All right? So, and also when it comes to repent, we also hear and we, 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 we can see it as being sorrowful or feeling the way when it comes to unbelief and sin, which sin is things that we do that is contrary to the will of God. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing when people say sin, some sin is sin is sin. Ain't no, ain't no, uh, well, you got some abominations out there. And I be telling people sometimes because we do say all sin is sin, but some sin is abomination. Okay. I need y'all to understand which is a different type of sin. It is. So we'll talk about that another day. But you have to understand that to sin, disbelief is sin. But we don't talk about that. Disobedience to God is sin. But we don't talk about that. Because people only a lot of times want to talk about the sin that they can see. All right? Oh, oh, oh well, she did X, Y, and Z, so she's sinning. But baby, you disobeying God when he told you to do something last week, so you sinning too. But... We have to understand that when it comes to sin, that there is different aspects of sin. It's not just about an act. And we're going to talk about that. Also, another part is uh, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to repent is that it should cause you to want to turn back to God, turn back to the things of God. So that's repent. So then you have repentance. Repentance is a different aspect of repent. Repentance, which means more so in the Greek, metanoia, which is, uh, it's basically spelled the same. The last part of it is it's different, which is ha having to do with a reversal or another decision. It's also a noun of repent. So repentance 
again, is reversal of something or to make a different decision. Repentance also has to do with, again, referring to the change of mind. But it also should produce, again, having that sorrowful uh, 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 feeling of regret to want to turn back to God because of something we have done. All right. It should also turn you back to the gospel of Christ. So that's the purpose of repentance. So now that you have a better understanding of repent and repentance, let's now talk about this from the text, because I believe the text shows us something about repentance and repent. So because again, many of us, we have heard and many of us maybe have understood and maybe we have not. So I'm going to help you to understand today. So in summary of the text, and I'm going to bring you all to where we are. I'm not going to read all through it, um, but I'm going to break it up. So here we have in the text, now Simon. Now, if you read on a little bit further in the text, Simon was known as a sorcerer at his, of his time. What they were were people that did magic. In other words, I like to say that they were gifted and used their gifts for the wrong reasons. And Simon was a sorcerer, somebody who worked magic. And he was so powerful at what he was doing that the people thought that he was God. My God. So you have to imagine this man, he was doing all this stuff, doing all these magic tricks and all this great stuff that the people thought that he was operating truly from a power of God. And that's why even today we got to be careful because a lot of times we think people are powerful and wonderful and that they operate under the power of God. But in reality, they operate from a whole totally different spirit. So you can look powerful. And yet not be the, but yet not carry the power of God. That's true. And we got to be careful of that today because some people are getting led astray because we are moved by what we see. We are moved by the, the signs of things. But just because somebody can produce a sign and a wonder does not mean that it's coming from God. All right. And so then we have it. So Simon, he was one that. So he was, they called him a, a sorcerer and he was doing sorcery and doing magic and doing all these great, powerful things, they would say. But then they just so happened to hear at the time Philip preaching the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now here this man is working magic and he just so happened to hear about a revival up the street. So he goes over to see, well, how he doing what I'm doing? And he over here teaching. So he gets caught up. And next thing you know, the Bible says that, that uh, Simon, he starts to believe in the word of God. He starts believing in the gospel, just like all the others that were in, in the area at the time that they were preaching. So then I need y'all to make note of this, that it said once they heard the gospel, even Simon, who was a sorcerer, heard the gospel. It said that they all believed. All right. They all believed. So next. Simon is then introduced to the apostles, Peter and John, which they were introduced to these two men of God, these apostles for a reason. So when Philip gave the word. He then sent for Peter and John, the Bible says, to come and pray and then lay hands on Simon and the others so that they may receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm bringing this out because I'm getting ready to make a pause here. We're going to put a pencil, put our pencil right here just for a second because I need you all to listen to this. Because the text states that they believed, they believed, they believed the story of Jesus. They believed it. And then it says, then they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, which here baptism, which I, I, I've been studying on this because here when it talks about baptism, we don't really necessarily know if it was the water baptism because it never said that they went under water. So therefore we can say, well, it was a water baptism or were they just emerged in the word of the gospel. All right. I'm going somewhere because 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 see, a lot of times we preach and we try to keep telling everybody you need to baptize, be baptized underwater, which I agree with that. But I want us to understand here. We don't know if it was really the water baptism 
Because if you really study baptism, there were different forms of baptisms. All right. So a lot of times people think of baptism, they think immediately water. But you can also be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can be baptized in the word of God. You can be baptized in your business. You can be baptized in things because it means a submerging in something. OK, so. So then it says that. So they were baptized, but we don't know exactly if there was a water or was it just the word. But the point here is for you all to understand that you can be a believer and you can also be baptized, Minister Katrina, and not have the Holy Spirit in you. I need y'all to hear that. Because everybody that believes and everybody that says they've been baptized don't necessarily have the Holy Spirit in them. That's why sometimes we can see people and be around people and still wonder why I don't see the fruits of the Spirit. Why are you still acting mean towards people? Because you can believe, go underwater, if we want to say it's water, but don't mean you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times people feel like, well, they go down under, we get, we believe, we go get baptized, we come up, oh, the, oh, God is all in us and over through us. That ain't true. You went down, you just came up wet. And we believe that something happened. And, but we do it as also symbolically because that's what Christ did. You understand what I'm saying? So that matters. Knowing that just because you believe, just because you've been baptized, does not mean that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's important for us to understand this. Because for some that, you know, didn't understand the difference, I hope you see this because a lot of people, we struggle with this. We know what we were taught. We know what people would say. And we thought once people got saved, they got everything. Like it just, it just felt like, well, you know, they just became better than everybody. But it's a process to this. All right. And this is also why you, 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 you have to understand that even here it says that he then calls for Peter and John to lay hands because he recognized that they needed the Holy Spirit. But you got to catch this. He moved immediately. He didn't wait. Because once you believe, once it's in you, once you get, well, once you hear the word and you're baptized in the word, you need to long for the Holy Spirit next. But, and this is also what you have to understand that God uses people that he called in positions, as he did Peter and John, it said to go and lay hands on them because of the realm of authority that they walked in. And it said they came, laid hands, and it said they were then filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. That came because they laid hands. But they were men that walked in that power and that authority. So if some of us been in church and people be like, come up here and get filled with Holy Ghost speaking to them and all this stuff. And people come, but people really don't know what's going on. And, and I just don't believe you let everybody lay hands, but those that got called when they lay hands, it should activate the gift. The Holy Spirit should then be able to come in you and overtake you. And then at some point, some will then begin to speak in a unknown tongue because the tongue is an evident of the Holy Spirit. But it's not the, the, the be all. You can have the Holy Spirit, and you, but you might not speak in tongue yet. Because tongues is another gift of the Spirit. But you got to have the Spirit first in order to have the tongue. Okay. Cause, but you got some people that got a tongue, but ain't got the spirit. They just learned it. Or they just da 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 I mean, they be like, come in the Honda. Come in the Honda. You can, you can, 
But they might not have the spirit of God in them. People nowadays is learning how to speak in tongues. But does not mean that the spirit of God is them. The fruit of the spirit is how you bear witness to the spirit. Just because you have a tongue, I'm going to tell y'all, don't mean you got the Holy Spirit. But a lot of times people think because they got the Holy Spirit, I mean, because they speak in tongues, I got the Holy Spirit. No, he said you know them by the fruits that they bear. That's plural. It's different fruits of the spirit. And what's so interesting, there's the evidence of speaking the tongue, but you know them by the fruit. There's different fruits. And we're not going over that today, but that's in Galatians. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. So I need y'all to understand that. So he prays for them. They pray for them so that they may receive the Holy Spirit. And then it says, we're going down to verse 20. And Peter then responds to him saying, we're in uh, Acts chapter 8. We're in verse, and I'm in verse 20. So Acts chapter 8 at verse 20 for those that would like to follow along. So then it, Peter then says to him, because at this point, Simon the sorcerer, he sees what happened. He sees how Peter lays hand and they get empowered. He sees all of this. And now he's like, how can I get that? How can I do what y'all doing? How much money do it cost for me to get this, get what y'all got? So he thought that he can go buy this at the store and he would be able to lay hands and people going to start speaking the tongue or people going to have the fruit of the spirit. He, he feels like seeing this, he, that he can just go buy it. So he's asking them, how much can I give you for this? And Peter then responds in verse 20 and says, may your money be destroyed along with you because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. And then he goes on to say, you have no part or share in this matter because your heart, which is your motive and purpose, is not right before God. And then Peter tells him to repent. That's what your Bible should say next. So look at, let's look at this for a moment. Because I believe that some of us have got stuck here because, again, we haven't truly discovered what repentance or to repent means. See, now, Simon only, think about it, all he did was, I'm Simeon, sorry, or Simon, yeah, he really only made them an offer, y'all. He just asked them, can I buy this with my money? He didn't really do an act. He didn't go and slap them or he didn't go and all he did was ask, how much would this cost? He just asked them, could he give them some money, which some people could wonder, well, what did he really do wrong? He just asked the question out of ignorance. So he asked them this. Which then, in verse 20, he's asking for something that God gives us, for, gives us free. So here Peter then shows us that because of even a question, that wickedness and sin can abide in a question, which is also tied to your thoughts. So what I see and what I learned from this is that and what Peter is showing us that wickedness and sin ain't just about action. It's also about thoughts. And what God was showing me is that many of us, we think that just because we didn't do a act or do a thing, especially in church, us church folk, we think just because we didn't do it, that we're, we're, we're deemed as righteous and better than folk, but in reality, we commit sin and wickedness in our minds every day. Because it's not just an act. And in verse 21, it then says, Peter says to Simon, you have no part or share in this matter because your heart, which is your motive and purpose, is not right before God. So he's telling him this. And then he tells him to repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the, the Lord that if possible, 
this thought of your heart may be forgiven. Y'all, our issues ain't always tied to our acts. Our issues have been tied to our thoughts. Because what you eventually, what you think on long enough, you're going to act on anyway. But see, we must remember also that what you think and are your thoughts really stem from your heart. And I'm, I'm helping us to understand this because a lot of us have been stuck in these places for so long and we're wondering why we're stuck and why we can't get around these humps. It's not so much of your actions, but it's our thoughts. And we've been taught, taught uh, 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 trained and taught for so many years, look righteous, look holy, look this way, walk this way, talk this way. But in our reality, our thoughts have been filthy. <laughs> are, 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 are we say, Lord, I haven't sinned against you. I didn't do that. I didn't do this. I, I've been, but all alone, what's going on in your mind? What? Because the thing is, we can say stuff all day long, but God knows your thoughts. He knows your inner heart. He knows what you really going to do, what you really want to do, let me say. <laughs> he, he, that's why I said he, he, he knows he knows when, when we may see such and such and be like, hey, girl, how you doing? But in our mind, we be like, that, mm, I ain't want to, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She, mm, mm, think she all that. But hey, how you doing, sis? Just be faking. But that be our thoughts. And we think, oh, I'm just holy to now. Look at them. They over there smoking. They over there sleeping around and all that stuff. Because we feel like we can see those things. Because we can see it, then we want, oh, they ain't righteous, they ain't holy, they ain't nothing. But what's going on in your mind? What's going on in your thoughts? That's how a lot of times we become very judgmental because we feel like our mess ain't being seen. But God sees everything. He knows everything. He sees our deep parts of us that everybody else can't see. It's what's going on in your heart. So he then tells him, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this thought of your heart may be forgiven. And I understand that he was talking to him based on his thoughts because Simon, he didn't do anything. He asked a question and you must remember what you think on. I'm telling you, it stems from your heart, the deeper parts of your heart. And here Peter spoke on the thought of Simon, and he called it wicked. Our thoughts. What have we been thinking? Because your thoughts can be wicked. And because of his thoughts, Simon, Peter told him to repent and pray. Meaning, ask God, if possible, that the thoughts of his heart may be forgiven. But the key here is he needed to first repent. And we already talked about what repent meant. Meaning, as I already stated, he needed to change his mind. He needed to reverse his thoughts and be sorrowful for what he had done in thought. We think just because we have a thought, it didn't come out. We didn't speak it. We didn't do it. Like, we can keep doing that. But God is like, I see your wicked thoughts. So we got to change the way we've been thinking. And God was telling me to challenge us that, that we, we need to repent when it comes to our thoughts. Because our thoughts is what's been holding us back from being able to move forward and being able to allow the manifestations of God. It's all about what we've been thinking. And some of us like, Lord, I've been doing everything you told me to do. I'm at church every week. I tithe all the time. I just do everything right. But what you've been thinking is not lining up. And oftentimes we don't think, we... Because I, I ain't say it, though. I ain't do it. But you thought it. And God said to challenge us today that we need to consider when what we're thinking and not just 
saying we're going to repent, but actually really doing it. Because a lot of times we say, you know, my mom, my grandma told me to repent, man. So I just repenting, you know, I'm just going about my day. And, but in your mind, you steady. And a lot of times we did stuff because somebody told us to do it. But we weren't doing it because we truly meant and we truly understood why we were doing it. And because a lot of times it sounds deep and wonderful. Oh, I, I, I need to repent. I'm just repenting. Thank you, Lord. We say, I repent. We'll say it kind of like, oh, man, I shouldn't have said I repent. But do we really know what we're saying? But when it came to repentance and when it comes to repenting, it means to change your thinking when it comes to your journey. Let me tell you, your thoughts is what's holding you back. I'm going to say that again. It's our thoughts. That's holding us back. Even that's why the devil try to place on your mind, even concerning you, concerning your family, concerning your purpose. Because if he can just get in your mind, he can stop your life. But we think just because we're not saying it out of our mouth that it's not affecting our lives, but it truly is. So we have to see something here. And God was telling me, he said that the problem has been, and also that we have, we, we also look at repentance, let me say this, and repenting as a negative word. Because growing up, you feel like if you had to repent, like that was just, that was like, man, like I'm going to be going to hell. You know, I can't be repenting because I might, ooh, like, you know, but God let me know, repenting and repentance is not a negative word. He says, don't see it as something negative. See it as something always bringing you back into alignment with him. If a thought comes up, I got to change that. I I, I, I can't allow that. I can't allow that. I told one of my, uh, one of my uh, mentor, my mentees, my spiritual daughters the other day, she was saying something. And uh, after I started studying a little bit, I said, uh, she said something crazy. And I said, repent. (laughs) And she was like, what I do? I said, the fact that you just said that, repent. (laughs) Because we heard that as kids and we thought like that was a scary word. Like, man, that ain't what I do. But in reality, when you say repent, it means change your mind. Change your mind about what you're thinking. Change your mind about what you're saying. Change your mind. That's what repentance and repenting is. And repentance is only you walking in repentance every day. Repentance is a process. And we walk in repentance daily. That's why every day the Bible says to renew your mind. Why? Because God knows we need to change our mind every day about something. Sometimes it's our perception on how we saw a thing. Oh, I got to change that because that, did she, maybe she don't like me. No, maybe that's just you. Let me change my mind about how I see that. Lord, I repent. Because what that is, is getting your attention to change your thoughts. Because we see it as something negative when in reality it is necessary for your journey with God because we are in flesh we are in flesh so when you repent basically you're putting your flesh up under subjection and say no I'm not gonna have that thought today Uh uh-uh we're not we're not gonna do that I'm not gonna let my thoughts my my carnality hinder what God wants me to do and where God has taken me because of my own thoughts And a lot of times we want to blame everything on the devil, but in reality, it be our own thoughts. Oh, that ain't nothing but the devil. No, baby, that was you. That was your thought. (laughs) You saw it like that. That is your perception, your perspective. (laughs) You saw that. That that had nothing to do with the devil. (laughs) That's just what, what you wanted to do. So we have to change how we see repentance. And we have to stop looking at it in a way because it's, it's, it's necessary that when you have thoughts or when you do something that is against God, do you know God wants us to fix, to, to perfect and to correct ourselves? He wants us to. That's just like when you do something and, and, and he sees somebody maybe warn you or whatever, that's him wanting you to fix it. 
to to make it right so that so that you don't fall in a trap or you get in a hole or something happens. He's like, stop it now. I was talking about this one day with my daughter. As parents, you sow seeds into your kids. You give them different tools so that when they get older, they're able to use those things. So that they ain't got to call you because they have all these problems. You feel like you've given them enough to where they can handle and solve their own problems. So where a lot of stuff don't always got to get to you. So that's why God has repentance there so that we can fix that. We, we can change our thinking. So therefore, he ain't got to tell us how to fix it. Repentance is there. Changing your mind. Because he trusts us to mature in him. He trusts us to do things right. So when the thoughts come... Oh, I repent. I'm, 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 I'm changing that. I'm changing that. And a lot of times we want God to tell us we wrong when you know you wrong. You, we want God to come and knock on the door and say, repent, repent, for the Lord has come, repent. When you know doggone well you was wrong. That's why he says, change your mind about your what 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 have you been thinking i challenge some of what what have y'all been thinking because a lot of our thoughts is what's hindering our flow in god a lot of our thoughts are stopping your purpose it ain't the devil matter of fact some of our thoughts is hindering our money Everybody rules them. Mm. <laughs> your thoughts is hindering your money, whether you believe it or not. Make you think. How do we see money? How do we see money? How are we handling money? Do you believe that you are? that you can even have money. Some people, we say we believe God, but do you really believe that God wants you to have wealth? Do you believe that you can have wealth? Things to think on. So then let me get ready to get down so we can go. It says in verse 22, he says, so repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this thought of your heart may be forgiven for be, be forgiven you. For I see that you are provoked by bitterness and bound by sin. Wait a minute now. So Simon asked him, can he pay him for the power that he possessed, he told him, you need to repent because first of all, this gift is free. So he's telling him to repent. But this is something very powerful that you got to pay attention to here. That he says again, so repent of this wickedness of your heart and pray to the Lord that if possible, the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven. So I see that you are provoked by bitterness and bound by sin. So in verse 23, Peter not only was telling him that he needed to repent because of his thoughts, y'all. He then goes to tell him that the root of his thoughts were bitterness and bound by sin. So I need y'all to understand something. What Peter just told him was the root of his thought. And he tells him that his thoughts have been provoked by bitterness and bound by sin. So what am I saying? Your thoughts just don't come from nowhere. Your thoughts are stemming from a seed of something that has produced a root in your life. So you wonder, okay, wait a minute. If I'm sinning in my thoughts, why am I sinning in my thoughts? Your thoughts are being controlled by seeds of problems and issues and traumas that you've been in in your life. My right, God today. So Peter was telling him, now you asked me if I can pay you for this gift, right? He says, but listen, you need to repent, meaning get your mind right. But I'm going to tell you that your mind can't get right yet. Why? Because your mind is being controlled by bitterness and sin. So now he's telling him, bro, you're wrong for asking me, but I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. 
So even if you thought you was getting ready to change your thought, first, how about we deal with this bitterness? Because that's why you having these thoughts. Let's deal with this sin in your thoughts, in your heart, because that's why you are producing these types of thoughts. So not only do we have thoughts, y'all, but the question is, why am I producing these thoughts? What have I been through in life? What traumas, what bitterness, what anger, what disappointments have I been through? Because those thoughts are stemming from that. And God was showing me. He was showing me that you got to recognize that your thoughts are stemming from somewhere. And what God wants you to know today is that it's important that you see the seeds and the roots of your thought because that's what's going to help you change your mind. We cannot fully repent if we don't deal with those roots. My God, that's good. And sometimes that's why, that's why it's hard for many people, and we say, man, I've been trying, I just, I've been trying, but some, it's just like something holding on to me. It seems like when I do and I try, it just be, what is going on? Because there's a root. There's something that is, is tied itself to your thoughts that even when you want to produce good, evil is always coming out. And see, most people, this is why a lot of people, we keep indulging in a lot of time in, 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 in sinful in sinful nature and sinful things and, and wickedness because we don't deal with the root systems. This is why it's so hard. Even when you say, Lord, forgive me, and I repent, the next day you're back in it. The next day you're back, your mind is back there because there is a stronghold in your mind. <laughs> The stronghold, it's in our mind. It's, 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 it's the thoughts. It's, 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 it's that, that's, what, that's what we're really fighting in the spirit. You're fighting. The Bible says that we don't fight like flesh and blood. We don't fight like that. We're fighting against strongholds in principalities which are tied to your thoughts. That's what, that's what people are fighting up against now. That's why it's something about having peace in the mind today. Because when you don't got peace, I'm telling you, it affects your whole life. But God was helping me to understand that most of us were stuck because of the, the seeds and the roots that are going on, that are tied to our thoughts. And because we're trying to fix something physically which truly has been rooted and watered in the perimeters of our mind which ultimately is really is, is what really is affecting our hearts it's not just physical a lot of it is mental telling you mental health is so high right now mental health meaning the we, we you <laughs> and see the church we we spend so much time shouting over stuff but never really dealing with the root of stuff. And then we want to blame God and then we wonder with God why you ain't did this and why you ain't did this and why it's taking so long and all this stuff when in reality, like I told you Thursday, God didn't did everything he gonna do. It's already done. We're just trying to get to the manifestation, but even the manifestation, this is God was showing me this uh, minister and Oliver, and I use this example on Thursday. The manifestation it's already been made. It's there. We just got to get there. Everything God was going to cause to be manifested on the earth, it's already been manifested. When God told the children of Israel that they was going to get to the promised land, the promised land was already created. He didn't pick it up and say, let me move it over here for them. No, he made it. It was physically made. It was placed somewhere, but they had to get there. Some got there and some didn't. But the, the whole point of the picture that I'm making is there was a manifestation. God already allowed it. God already built it. He created it. He said, I'm going to take you out to a place full of milk and honey. It's going to be beautiful. He already made it. It was there. And whether it took them 40 days or 40 years, it was still there. And like I told y'all Thursday, we determine the time that it's going to take 
to get to that which he's already manifested. But let me tell y'all what's hindering us. The same thing that hindered them. Your thoughts. Our thoughts is what's hindering us. It's not the devil. We got to see and we got to think and we got to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us what's causing me to think this way. Was it my childhood? Was it the abandonment? Why am I so bitter? And then you got to allow God to heal you. But the problem with a lot of us is that we can't get healed because why? We don't want to admit it. We don't want to see it. We don't want to deal with it. We rather look over it than to acknowledge it. I got some bitterness in me. You know what? I think I'm still a little hurt. I'm disappointed. And then offer that up to God. And let the Holy Spirit lead you and get into And Some might be so deep where you might need to pull on some help. And that's okay. But that's what's going to really call for true repentance. Repentance is a process. And the beginning of true repentance is to acknowledge that I got an issue. <laughs> it's to acknowledge that something is wrong. That's why Peter told him, repent. But then he said, but let me tell you that your thoughts have been provoked by bitterness. So not only does he say, I need you to repent, I need you to deal with the bitterness and the, the sin that you've been bound by. Because once you deal with those things, then you will be able to fully turn. But many of us have been stuck in our thoughts because we don't want to see ourselves. But I'm good. As long as I go to church, I'm good as long as I give my offer. I'm good as long as I speak to people and do right. But when I go home, I'm battling my mind every day. We battling. We having these thoughts. We can't stand half the people we didn't spoke to at church. We ain't can't stand the people on our job. We just hate everybody. But it's our thoughts. And, and we say this, y'all, I'm telling you, I've been around enough church people. I've been around enough stuff to understand. Y'all, a lot of people not happy in church. they not. People are miserable right in church. And a lot of people don't even know how to get themselves out. They don't even know what to do because a lot of people feel like I've been going to church all my life and I'm still miserable. I'm still not seeing that. We've been saying the same stuff. I'm waiting on God. We've been waiting on God for 50 years. <laughs> so bad. Some people are like, Lord, is you real? Like, because we were only taught, repent. Don't do that. Don't do this. But we really weren't taught how to really deal with the you in you. Long as I knew how to dress me up. Long as I knew how to pray, speak in tongues, roll the floor. Oh, she must be holy. She must be sanctified. But in her mind, she filthy. I was praying this morning. I said, God, Help my mind be sanctified. We want to look sanctified. How about, can my mind be sanctified?
Because that's where the strongholds are. And we have to understand where the mind go. The body going to follow. A lot of people are suffering physically because of what's going on in, they're in, in, internally, let me say. And we wonder, God, what's going on? I told y'all Thursday when we talked about this. God ain't waiting. We're not waiting on God. He waiting on us. And guess what he waiting on? I told y'all to change our mind. Change your mind about how you've been perceiving your situation. Change your mind about how, how, how you see your suffering, how you see your process. Even though it's hard, we still got to change our perspective on why and, and, and what we're going through. That's why we're going through it so long because our mind is still in the same place it was when we started. When God is like, I just need you to change how you see it. Change how, how you perceive it. Because you got to understand, if I'm with you in the storm, it's really not a storm. It's a process. That's why when they, was, they were on the boat and they said, Lord, it's storming. And where Jesus at? He down there asleep because he knew it was only a process. But y'all tripping because y'all see it as a storm. Yeah, it might look like it, but change how you view it. Because as long as I'm with you in it, it's a process. And because it's a process, I can start it and stop it at any moment. That's why he got up and spoke to it, and it stopped. We got to change how, how, how we see it. I'm telling you that... I didn't, I didn't understand a lot of stuff. I, I'm be honest, I had to learn a lot of stuff along the way because when it came to certain things, because I just thought, I just knew within me, it was more to God. There's no way we can be serving God all our lives and like, God, uh-uh, this can't be it. This can't be the end. Like, like come on, we come on, that we just go to church, you know, a few of us, and we go home, and then that's just, you know, we have family events, and we have family reunions, and we love everybody, and then you just go home and redo it again, and, you know, just like, but ain't nobody really see That can't be it. Can't be it. That's why I had to begin to dig a little bit deeper and go a little bit deeper in the text and see God in a different way. I'm telling you, and I'm not saying this to seem any type of way, but I'm telling y'all that there is a process and God has you on a process, but everything ain't bad. Nobody wants to go through. We, we don't because that's our flesh, but it is rewarding when you go through it with God. But see... I'm be honest, I'm learning more to be more transparent about your process. Because even growing up, they didn't tell you a lot about the process. They wanted you just to, like I said, look away, but they weren't telling you that they was going home. Their flesh was burning. They didn't tell you what they was doing. They didn't tell you they was sipping and drinking and smoking. They weren't telling you that they was fighting in their flesh. They didn't tell you they didn't like Sister Susie. They didn't tell you they didn't like Brother So-and-so. They didn't tell you that. They just wanted us to come to church and think that everything was perfect. So when we got grown and we start seeing stuff, we like, what? wait a minute. I thought they was, what, what, what? because nobody was transparent about their process. So that's why as we got older, we had to learn God in a way because nobody told us that side of God. And then as we grew, it was like God was always just, Mad and that you, if you did, you wore red lipstick, you was going to hell. So it was just like, well, wait a minute, God, are you mean? Or well, I can't do this. It was the picture of God that was shown to us. And what God began to deal with me on, He said, He told me this a couple weeks ago. He said that we are in a time now, and if a lot of us aren't careful. We will keep seeking for a God that our forefathers and elders may have known in a way. And we seeking for this God, but we, they didn't know the, the fullness of God. 
So if we keep looking for God just in that way, we're going to miss what God is doing and who God is for us in this way, in this right now time. And God said a lot of people are trying to go back. Oh, I need, you know how the old folk, old people used to be, we used to be and we used to tarry and we used to be at church for 24 hours a day and all this stuff. We're not in them times no more. And it's okay. Now, see, they, they had, they had a longing for God. They seen things, but I told y'all this before, but they didn't have the knowledge that we have now of God. Because a lot of them couldn't read. They only could take a few words and then they made those doctrines out of a few words because they didn't know how to read it. So when it said don't go to Broadway, they literally thought don't go to Broadway. Do not go to what's that uh, in California or don't, don't, don't go do entertainment. They thought that's what that meant because they did not know how to read. So they knew a side of God based on their information and their knowledge and their way to be able to read and understand. We have a new opportunity now because now we can read a little bit more. We got different versions of the text. So when we get before God, I'm telling you, we're not going to be able to have all the excuses they had. Because God's going to say, no, you had Google. You had Amplify, NIV, NLT, Message Version, which is the ghetto version. You had all that. To learn me and to know of me. So this is what I was saying. So they saw God and they knew an aspect of God. But God said, I want y'all to go further than they went. I want y'all to see more than they saw. I want y'all to be able to, to learn me in a different way. Because now you have more. But what God was showing me is that many people are steady trying to chase the God of then, which is the former reign, and not trying to see the latter reign, which is the God of the now. And it's important because if we're going to get to the manifestation, if we're going to get to the promised land, if we're going to get to where God wants us to go, we have to see God different we got to see him in a way knowing that he is a real father not just one that wanted to just whip you in shape all day but he's a god that he's gentle he is kind he is loving and he is long suffering and he is concerned about us and i'm telling y'all this because now we are in times where we need to deal with the issues in our mind because if you deal with the issues in your mind, I'm telling you, which, which out of your heart flows. All this is your heart, your mind, your will, all this tied together. So we got to start dealing with our thoughts. We got to start dealing with our heart. There's no way, no way we're going to be able to get before God and have all these excuses. Well, she didn't do this. He didn't do this. Mommy did it. No, baby. You got therapists, you got me, you got the Bible, you got everything you need. You have no excuse anymore. But we got to get our mind together. So you must understand to repent and walk in true repentance. That you have to, you're going to have to dig. And you're going to have to ask God to show you some things. Concerning your thoughts, concerning your, your heart, to get into the seeds of it, get to the root of the problem. To, listen, we all trying to get there, but God wants us to be perfected. God wants you to mature. God wants you to be where you're supposed to be. He does. So I need you to understand this. So, and after, so I get ready to close this encounter that Simon had. And he's listening to them. And that's also why it's important to be in a place where the apostolic is. And understand the apostolic is really the full fivefold ministry. Because not only were they able to help him see, to help him to repent, let me say, they also was able to help him see the root of his problem. Everybody can't see that. You got to be able to see in the spirit. That's why being around the right people, being connected to the right place, the right house, the right leaders. Because it's going to help you to not just 
see issues, but also give you what you need in order to be delivered from them issues. And Peter was able to see into Simon because of his gifts and because of his position. And then Simon then says, well, basically, in my, my language, well, man of God, if you see it, bro, he said, how about y'all pray for me? Help me so that even though you see what you see that I could perish, can you please pray for me that it will be changed? That it will be broken off of me? In other words, Simon was basically saying, I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to be changed. I want to walk in repentance. I want, I want my thoughts to be different. Because he thought he just, he said, listen, y'all up here doing this stuff. I, I, I thought I was powerful, but let me get with y'all. Let's connect. He started following him. He wasn't thinking nothing. He like shooting. And he said, well, man, how much you going to cost me? How much going to cost me to do what you do? He didn't know they was getting ready to tell him that he was, that he was going to find out his whole life story through them. <laughs> Sometimes God will do that. Well, we think we'd be okay, and next you know God has somebody, and you'd be like, what dog? I didn't know all that, all that going on. <laughs> I, I, thought my, you know, I thought I was good. I thought my heart was right. <laughs> and God like, no, nah, bro, you got some bitterness in there still. We got to deal with some of this sin. But the thing is, it's not to be ashamed of, y'all. Church is so sad. Church Oh, God, it can be so sad because the church is, is really almost too like a hospital. Let's say that. But when you go to the hospital, you go because you have a problem. When you go to the hospital, you go because you have a problem. The nurses know you're there. The doctors know you're there. Everybody else there know you got a problem. But you shouldn't have to go into the hospital and say, oh, I'm ashamed, but I'm here. And you're trying to cover yourself up and you don't want them to see the problem. Well, you probably shouldn't have went. Because you went for your problem to be exposed and your problem to be revealed. See, the church, we come to church fake as we want to be. I'm just coming to church. But in reality, we're coming to church because for God to help us, to show us what's in us or whatever it is that we need to do. That's why we're here. I come to the hospital so I can get whole and I can get some help. Not to be here to impress folk. But the church has became a place where we trying to impress each other, see what she got on, he got on, see who looked the best, who got the best three-piece suit on, who got the best hat on. That's what church had became. But as soon as somebody down and somebody going through something, or somebody then slipped out on their marriage, or somebody then got pregnant or something like that, they ashamed to come to the house of God. When the house of God is supposed to be the hospital. Okay, if, your, if, if, if some of your mess get exposed, not saying out in front, but I'm saying if God reveals something to somebody that God is showing his love through, you shouldn't have to feel ashamed. You should not feel ashamed because you got a little struggle going on. We all got struggles. That's why we're here, because we need a Savior that's going to help us. That's why nowadays this generation does not want to come to church, because they feel like they shamed. They feel like they don't have what, what we feel like they need, so they rather stay away from what was supposed to be a spiritual hospital. So we, we, here, we are here today because we got issues and we need a God. We're here today because we're trying to keep our flesh up under subjection, not because we're perfect. We're trying to be perfected. We're trying to be used of God and also be able to go out and help other people. But you should not be, you should not come to church or be ashamed to come to church because you got issues. You should not be ashamed. I'm not telling you to tell everybody your business, but there be, should be some people somewhere where you can say, sis, I'm going through this. Bro, bro, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I'm addicted to porn. Bro, I, 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 sis, look, I, I, I drink so much, I don't know what I'm going to do anymore. I got some issues going on. We should be able to help each other, not judge each other, to make people feel ashamed to come to the house of God. So I said we got to repent 
Because our minds, the way we see church, the way we see, no, this, ain't, this ain't about no show. You should come and be able to receive the love that you need the same way you can go to the hospital or anywhere else to get help. We're supposed to be that same place. But we think we're better than everybody. And when people come in, they got to feel a way. We can't be like that. If you got an issue, you should be able to call on the ministers or call on the pastor, somebody, and say, listen, this is where I'm at. I'm struggling. I'm heavy. I'm at the, I'm, I don't know if I'm about to have a job tomorrow. I'm still dealing with grief. I'm still dealing with anger. I'm still dealing with this, this, this loneliness and this bitterness. Even when I felt like my mother left me or my daddy, when I'm still there. Shouldn't have to be ashamed. Oh, let me cover it up because I want them to think I'm just got it all together. I might as well stay at home. Because there's been too much of that. That's why we can't be, I'm telling y'all, that's why we cannot move forward as a body. Because we don't want to be real. And then what happens, we have what we have now. And then you look on social media and you got all these pastors and these people now with all these scandals and all this stuff now coming out from 50 and 40 years ago because everybody wanted to hide their mess and nobody wanted to get no help. In the church. Because we wanted to try to keep everything a secret and not be able to get the help that we needed. Sad. But it's the truth. So after he encountered, he told him, he said, pray for me. And so we get ready to close. I believe that's where, where God, he wants us to be in that place. Not only as a place where we're open and willing to repent and have a mind change and let God deal with our thoughts. But we also need to be in a place that where somebody comes and asks you for help, we should be willing to give them that prayer and the help that they need and not be able to judge them, especially because we a prophetic house. God don't reveal to us things about people so that we can just judge them and make them feel like nothing. He reveals things so that we can help people. Not revealing just so we can think we, we, we got it together. Oh, no, because at the end of the day, we all need God and we all live a life of repentance daily. Daily. This thing is a daily walk. Because some days you wake up, you don't, feel, you don't feel like talking. You don't feel like being bothered. You, it, it's daily. You have to say, Lord, we ain't gonna be like, I ain't going to be like that. I ain't going to be like that. You have to tell your mind, yourself that. Daily. Somebody about to <laughs> get in your way. You're on the highway. You're about to say, oh, Lord, help my mind. Because, woo, I'm about to tear them clean off. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I have, to, I have to cut myself off like, because don't let you be in a hurry, baby. It's over. Everybody getting it. Everybody. <laughs> and then you get to work and say, Lord, thank you, Lord. I repent because I didn't have to tell everybody else. <laughs> in my mind. No, we, we, we all walk in this life out of repentance daily. Help me, help me, help my mind. But then at some point, we should start seeing ourselves get a little better on the road. You know, I ain't, I ain't gonna, I, I ain't gonna get them no finger today. I ain't gonna do that. Because some people, they just be ignorant on the road for no reason. My God. They're like, what kind of day? They, Lord, they already starting off on a bad day. It's 8 30 in the morning. So it's our thoughts. So as we stand, I, I wanna challenge us. In the days ahead, to just to consider, consider, consider our thoughts, consider, you know, how we respond to things. And because I, I, I get it, but a lot of times we, we think that just because we don't verbally say stuff or react, that we, we okay and we good. But if you thought it, I know that's why the text says, um, where it talks about it, it says, 
Even if, even if really, even if a man looks on a woman wrong, the Bible says. That's the text. <laughs> that it say that. It say that, absolutely. But because that's really a thought. It's tied to your thoughts. So we have to be mindful of that. And, and I'm not saying that we're going to have it all together tomorrow. And, but it's the fact of knowing that God still sees our thoughts. And if there's any thoughts that we may have or had, we, we want to repent of that. You know, and that's why I said today, I was like, Lord, I, I, help my thoughts. I want my thoughts to be pure. I want my motives to be right. You know, even if somebody says something, you know, I, or somebody did something, and you see them, your thoughts should be, oh, I want to slap them so hard upside their head. You, you can't, you should be, man, it's sad. Because we ain't got to be like this, man. What, are, what have you been thinking? Even when you're going through the storm that you're in, what have your thoughts been like? Like, Lord, get me out of this quickly. I'm tired. I'm just tired. Lord, hurry up. I get it. Because they come. And you might have to, Pull down that thought. Cast down those imaginations. And say, Lord, listen, if you got me here, I surrender to the process. Because I've realized I can't get myself out of this. Only you can. So I might as well think on those things that are pure, holy, peaceful. Those things that are loving. That's what the Bible says. Think on those things. If you find yourself only thinking on negative things and thinking on pain and hurt, that's where your thoughts, your thoughts are going to be consumed in that. So I challenge you, what, what have you been thinking? What has your thought life been like? And then I'm going to ask, where is those thoughts stemming from? Or what, what, what has been feeding those thoughts? What keeps you in that place in your mind? What keeps you there? Why do you keep rehearsing that situation in your mind? Because those things also are what are affecting your way of thinking. Your way of seeing things. If all you know is pain, that's what you're going to always see. And no matter if God even brings somebody in your life, you're going to still see the pain because that's where your mind is. You'll never see nothing good because everything you see and you, everything you feed your mind is negative. Because other people have hurt you, you think everybody's going to hurt you because that's where your mind is. So we got to get to that place where we say, listen. I know I've been through some things. I know I've been hurt. I know I've been disappointed. I may be angry. I may be bitter. But God, I, I, I'm giving this stuff over to you. I want to be healed. I want to be whole. I don't want my past, my pain, the rejection, the loneliness, and the hurt to dictate my thought life. Because as we saw here with Simeon, with Simon, because of what he'd been through, started producing the, the thoughts, which then he began to give speech to his thoughts. So if your words are always negative and you always come in so much pain, you got to go back. Because everything ain't the devil. Some things is us. And we got to go back. We got to go back. God, maybe I thought I was here, but maybe I'm not. Maybe I thought I let that situation go, but maybe I didn't. Because I, it's producing these thoughts. And I don't want it to no longer produce the wrong thoughts in my life. God, because it's a hindrance to where you're trying to take me. 
Some of you feel unworthy. Some of you feel like, I, 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 I know it can't be me. I know God don't want to use me. Why can't it be you? Because of the rejection, because of the letdown, because of what you've been through in your childhood. It made you feel like as an adult that you're unworthy. Made you feel inadequate. So that's why your thoughts have been the way that they have been. Because of where you came from. But I tell you all today, no matter what you've been through, no matter what it looks like, your past, I'm telling you, does not have to dictate your future. Your past does not have to keep having you replay them bad thoughts. Your past does not have to keep you bitter, envious, jealous. Doesn't have to. And because of Jesus, we all have the ability to be forgiven, to be restored, to have a new start, to have a new day care what your mama did. I don't care what your daddy did. I don't care what they didn't do, how they did it. You get a new start. Our eyes closed, every hand lifted. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just going to ask everybody just to begin to talk to God. If you have a heavenly language, begin to speak in your heavenly language. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we make this whole place your sanctuary. We make this whole place your altar. God, you see the hearts and minds of everybody in this room and those that are listening. God, I ask you in this moment, Father, Lord, to begin to touch the hearts of every woman, every child, every man, God. Lord, I ask you now, Father, God, to expose and reveal, God, any seeds, God, any roots, Father God, that is not like you, Father. God that is controlling God and has been attached to their thought process. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we break every stronghold today. God, we're going to uproot these seeds. We're going to uproot this mess, Father God. God, so that it will no longer have authority, that it will no longer have access, oh Father, to hinder the people, God, to hinder your people, God. God, that their minds shall be renewed today. God, that they will have a repented heart, that they will change, Father God, their mind and their perspective and their perception how they see you God how they see their situation God even now father oh God I pray that nobody perishes I pray now God that they will have life and life more abundantly oh father God that they will have life God life in their homes oh God life in their businesses oh God life in their marriages oh God God that no one shall perish oh father because God we're going to have a change of mind and we're going to have a change of heart we're going to do things differently why because we're going to think differently and God I thank you today I thank you today for renewed minds all over this room I thank you now God that we'll see life differently that we'll see ourselves differently that we'll see that we are more than a conqueror we are more than enough that we can walk in your holiness that we can receive your grace God that we can have wealth we can have prosperity that we are more than a conqueror that we are the head and not the tail that we can be the lender and not borrowers that we are made in your image that we can walk in favor God I thank you now God that we can walk in obedience, oh God. God, to do your will. That we don't have to be our past. We don't have to be the rejection. We don't have to be the poverty. We don't have to be the hopelessness. God, we thank you today. Sunday, That we can be different. That we can live differently. That from this day forward, that they will have peace, oh God. Peace in their mind. Peace in our home. Peace when it comes to their purpose. Peace when it comes to their destiny, oh Father. Even now, God, because they know who they are, because of whose they are. And God, I thank you today. 
I thank you today. I thank you today for restoration. I thank you today for wholeness. I thank you today, God, that you're completing the work inside of us, that you're completing what you started. Oh, God, that there should be no more delays. Yes, Lord, in the realm of the spirit, I pray now no more delays, no more hindrances, because your mind shall be changed. You will not have to take 40 years for a four-day trip. The devil is a liar. You won't have to take years and years and years to accomplish what God has said that you can have early the devil is a liar so we bind up every distraction every hindering block today why because our mind my god has been changed yes lord a changed mind produces a changed life and we thank you today oh god we thank you today we thank you today we thank you today for the strongholds being broken, even in this place and those watching the strongholds of your mind. The way you see repentance is differently. You see it differently. It's okay. It's not a bad word. It just brings us back into alignment. So when you mess up, just repent and get yourself back together. Just get back in alignment. When that thought comes, because it may come again, just repent and get yourself back together. Yes, Lord. You don't have to live in condemnation. You don't have to live in condemnation. You don't have to stay there. Get yourself back up and start again. Keep moving forward. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yes, Lord. It's in your surrender. It's in your surrender. There's somebody listening. It's in your surrender. You got to surrender to God. Stop trying to work everything out on your own. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord and surrender your life. And when we surrender our life to God, that also includes our thoughts. And he wants our thoughts to be pure and holy. That's why he says to renew your mind daily and present your body as a living sacrifice. That includes everything, your mind, your heart, and your will. And it's, it's his divine purpose that you surrender. I'm going to pray real quick. Let me, let me see. Can you get that oil out of there? I'm just going to pray real quickly while I have a minute. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 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 Let me pray for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Restoration. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's in your surrender. Yes, Lord. It's in, it's in your surrender. And God says, I have not forgotten you. Even when you felt far away, he says, I have not left you. Yes, Lord, you are on the mind of God. Yes, Lord. You know where you're supposed to be. And God says, I've led you back. His spirit, his love led you back to him. Yes, Lord. Even when the devil tried to lead you astray, God says, I brought you back. Yes, Lord. He loves you with an everlasting love. And I pray now that he gives you a peace. Peace in your situation. Peace even as I see you making some challenging decisions. But may God give you the wisdom and the strength 
to endure, to endure. And I pray now, hold this for me. I pray now that God completes the healing in your heart, the disappointment, even sometimes the loneliness that you have been dealing with. That God heals you from the crown of your head to the soles of his feet and that he completes that. Those things which concerned you. And God says, I love you for real. He says, I love you for real. And it's not about just what you can give me. He says, I love you for real because you've been so used to having to give to people for them to even feel like they love you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. But it's all in your surrender. Total surrenderance and healing. From this day forward, may all the strongholds off of your mind and off your heart be broken today. In the name of Jesus, you won't go back. You won't go back. You will not go back, says the Spirit of the Lord. And we pray that everything in your life comes into full alignment. Every distraction, get us some tissue, every distraction be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that the Holy Spirit overtakes you and, and fills you to give you the strength that you need, the authority that you need to walk in, even over your household, even when it comes to your family. Yes, Lord, the devil has does not have access over your life any longer. And we pray a hedge of protection over you, over your mind. In the name of Jesus, you belong to God. You are God's property, says the Spirit of the Lord. Now I pray peace, peace in your home, peace in your family, peace with your children, peace. Be still. Yes, Lord. God says he has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. You thought you were forgotten. To a degree, it's almost like you're so used to being forgotten. You're so used to people giving up on you. You're so used to people not being concerned. But this is a different season. And you got to receive the love of God. Stay focused. Stop looking at your imperfections and look to God. Healing is your portion. Healing is your portion. And whatever you're trying to do, you can't do it without the help of God. That's the strength and the power of God that comes from the Holy Spirit within you. Because some things you've been through in life and it tries to creep up. Things try to come back because you've been fighting and trying to fight things out of your own strength. But you needed the strength of the Holy Spirit to be able to withstand the darts of the devil. So we pray now that the strength of the Holy Spirit begins to strengthen you for this journey. Stop looking unto man, but look unto God. Who is your strength? Says the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You loved here. You loved here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God today. Yeah. Love on them. Yes, Lord. We bless God today. We bless God today. We bless God today. Yes, Lord. Bless your name, God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are wonderful. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Shekananamanso. Yes, Lord. 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 May God fill you. Fill you with the Holy Spirit. And take over you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. May there be an infilling like you've never felt and experienced before in your life. This is a new season for you. This is a new day, says the Spirit of the Lord. I see God getting ready to do some new things in your life. You're getting ready to have a hunger. You're getting ready to see him in ways that you never have. I even see God getting ready to speak to you. I just hear, it's almost like I see angelic encounters with you. Let the presence and the, let the spirit of God overtake you mother like never before. Don't fight it. Just let him have it. In the name of Jesus, that's the presence, that's the power of God. Hey, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, out of her belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of her belly, out of her belly, take over her, God. Let the Spirit take over her, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, in the name of Jesus, complete the work that you've begun in her. Heal of God from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. This is a new day. You will not be the same woman that you be in. God is getting ready to change your mouth. He's getting ready to change your language. He's getting ready to change your, your that, that it's almost like he's getting ready to break some things off of you. He's getting ready to break it off of you. He's getting ready. Yes, Lord. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, every stronghold, every stronghold, every stronghold, every stronghold, every yoke of a sander be broken. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You will be a new woman. A new hunger. A new thirst. A new desire. He's getting ready to give you a new taste. Kata. Sunday. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And you're going to be free. Free in the heart. Free from even the, your past. Yes, Lord. And He's going to show you a love. That you've never had. Yes, Lord. A love. A love. And a joy. And a peace. A longing for God. Yes, Lord. Freedom. Healing. 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 Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God ain't done with mother. She just now getting started. Yes, Lord. She just now getting started. Tell you, she just now getting started. God has a work for her to do. 
Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And it is so. Glory be to God. We're going to go into our time of giving. Like to sow today or be a blessing. Those that are watching virtual, the information should be on the screen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, God. It's our time of giving. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They have the envelopes. Our Lord. Yes, Lord. Are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, the glory. My voice is gone. I'll be wanting to sing, y'all. God going to help me. We worship you, our Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. If you would like to give online, please see the information on the screen. And I believe you all can give. He'll pass it around. He'll pass around the offering. Bucket for glory. Yes, Lord. And I got a few announcements before we dismiss. Our Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Are you ready? Yes, Lord. Mm, sweet spirit. Restoration is here. God is restoring. He's restoring. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Pray over the offering. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God. We pray over this offering. We ask you, God, to increase it. We ask you, Father God, to do what only you can do when it comes to our finances. But one thing that I've learned, God, that we have to have a changed mind. So we thank you today that our mind will be changed. God, even concerning money, concerning our finances, that we won't think, God, poverty, poverty short with a poverty mentality, but we will think and see money, God, as a resource that only comes from you. So, God, we give you our money today. We ask you to see on it, blow on it, increase it, open windows, open up doors for opportunities, resources. We bless you for it because you are a God of increase. You are a, the God of the harvest. You are a God of wealth and prosperity. And for that, we're thankful. We bless you for it. And I ask you to let some see an increase this year off their seeds and off their giving. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Real quickly, you all can be seated, and I have some announcements, and uh, they can come on in. Um, so tonight at six thirty, our girls have an information informational meeting at six thirty. Those between the ages of ten and seventeen, that would be via Zoom. So let's make sure that we govern ourselves accordingly as we're kicking off our Glory Glory Girls Mentoring Program. Um, that we're starting. And then also tomorrow night at 7 p.m. This is virtual. The meeting tonight is also virtual. And then tomorrow at 7 p.m., um, the new believers class starts. It will be via Zoom. 
So make sure if you have not, and you want to be a part of that, that you text um, 2024 events to 94000. The link will also, I believe, be on social media. And then also it's going to go through our texting communication that we use. So that is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Even if you feel like you've been in church a while and you just want a refresher and you just want to kind of go through some things, um, feel free to join the class. Um, it's going to be awesome. And I believe God is going to be at 7 p.m. It's not just one night. Um, I believe it'll be a couple of weeks. Um, but we'll get on and have class and talk about some things so that you all can have a knowledge, um, knowledge of things. Because one thing I learned about a lot of us in church, we've been in church all our lives, but a lot of times we don't really know a lot. <laughs> we, we, we know still some of the Sunday school verses and stuff like that, but we really um, haven't really came into the knowledge of something. And again, it's nothing to be um, embarrassed about and nothing like that, because I'm going to tell you all something. I'm unlearning a lot of stuff too. So sometimes you have to, you want to go through refreshers and you want to, sometimes God, you'll read a text and next year you come back and read it. Be, you be like, I didn't even know that was there, you know, because God will open your eyes to stuff. So don't feel embarrassed. If you want to get on, get on. We're going to have an awesome time in the Lord studying and learning together. I learned if you learn together, you can grow together, you can build together. So that's what we believe in. And this is only the introduction of our new, our journeys, educational classes that we're starting. We'll have other classes coming up. We're going to teach you on the Holy Spirit, teach you on the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to teach on um, just a lot of different things that as the Lord leads us and guides us as we're building. Um, also, always govern ourselves. We know Thursdays is midweek fire. Um, next Sunday, we will be in St. Louis. And then... Um, as we're preparing for October, bless God, October 24th through the 26th is our women's gathering. So we're preparing for that. If you have not registered, I am soliciting and challenging everybody to make sure you register. You better register at least by the 10th if you want a t-shirt, because after the 10th, you will not get a t-shirt. You can still register, but you just have to, you won't, you miss out on some other stuff. So make sure you register for that. Spread the word, share the word. If y'all ride past, I think sign up there on the corner, sign in Sykeston, Perryville, I think over there in Cape, y'all going to start seeing our sign all through the city on billboards. So just go ahead and um, start, like I said, announcing it, let your friends know, let people know we're believing God for an awesome time in the Lord. But I believe that actually started today. So if you see that, somebody take a picture so I can know. I may see it, I may not. <laughs> but don't crash or nothing, so don't. <laughs> don't stop and stop <laughs> or have somebody else do it for you. Don't be trying to take a picture and drive at the same time. Jesus, no. Um, so, again, that is October 24th. I'm asking everybody to please come out, show up. We need the men and the women. It is open for everybody. Um, but we're going to have a great time. There are dress, um, there are some uh, dress themes every night for the different days. So make sure you govern yourself accordingly. Um, we, you, we do give our prizes and stuff if you participate. So be mindful of that. Also, um, y'all, y'all didn't got, didn't ran through here. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> the children. But anyway, so November 6th, November 6th, put this on your calendar. If you have never did a new members class and you want to be a part of the ministry or you are a part, but you never took a class, the new members class is November 6th. That is at 7 p.m. November 6th at 7 p.m. That will be a new members class. Um, you can still be a part. Some of you are already a part. We just didn't do that. We don't do the classes all the time. Um, but if you have never been through the class, you want to make sure you are on there on November 6th at 7 p.m. Also today at 1.15, <laughs> um, we have a meeting for those that want to sing in the choir and the worship team that we're developing for October 24th. Um, that is going to be today. We're having a meeting, uh, informational meeting today um, following service. So I want you all to just govern yourselves accordingly. Again, girls, we meet tonight at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. So make sure you all govern yourself accordingly <laughs> uh, for that. All right, so I believe that is all our announcements right now. Again, I want to thank everybody that has been, that's helped the last couple of weeks. We had 
Well, was that September? We had the parade, which was a success. So thank God for that. And we also was in St. Louis for the Taste of St. Louis event. We thank God for that. So we got a lot we have going on trying to do. Also, I think October um, 11th, this is not on my calendar, but I'm just telling y'all this in case. Uh, we will be giving out information. No, it's October 11th, I think at the Shawnee Park Center. Um, they're having a um, some type of event. Um, like for mental health and different things like that. So we'll be there. I think it's between 10 and 2 at the shiny building in Cape. They're going to be having like different testings and stuff going on for the community of Cape. Um, so just wanted to make y'all make note of that. All right. So let's stand on our feet so we can get out of here. Again, let's keep Sister Georgia, Brother Jamie, in our prayers um, as she's as she's getting ready to help us and allow us to have a new church baby. Praise God. So. Let's bless God for them and send prayers their way um, this morning. All right. Our minds clear. Bless God for uh, uh, prophetess. Prophetess made it back safely and sound. <laughs> All right. Father God, we thank you this morning, God, for what you've done and what you're getting ready to do. And Father, I ask you if you could just con continue to cover and protect our families and protect our church family and their family. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come toward their dwelling. And God, we plead the blood even over them that are watching us virtually, those that are in St. Louis, oh God. God, we pray this week, let it be a blessed week, Father. I'm expecting God for testimonies this week, God, because we are repenting and we are changing our minds about how we see ourselves and we see things, oh God. So Lord, we're just, we're just excited about what you're doing and what you've already done, Father. God, we are excited, Father. Lord, that we can Come to full alignment, Father, when it comes to your will and your purpose you have for our lives. Nothing hindered, nothing broken. In Jesus' name. And as we all say here at the Glory Center, go in glory of the Lord. Be blessed.